Monster Hunter, it's a franchise you either know or you don't. You are, as the name suggests, a Monster Hunter. Now this series has spanned many games, and too many to name here in fact. From spin-offs like the Ultimate series, to full-blown titles like Monster Hunter World, and even epic expansions like Iceborne. God knows how many hours I've clocked into all these games combined, but one thing is for sure, Monster Hunter Rise added to those hours. So let's find out what I thought. Without further ado, here is the Monster Hunter Rise review. In terms of graphics, the first thing I have to say is that this is a port from the Switch. Now, admittedly, the developers have added a higher resolution texture pack and some improvements to the lighting, but mostly it's considered to have graphics that are slightly worse than Worlds. I can agree with this, and this is emanated in the type of animations used for the visual effects, with a more cell shaded animation taking hold in Rise. The monsters still remain excellently crafted though, with classics like Tiostra remaining elegant and graceful, or the more intimidating Anjanaf still presenting themselves as a threat on the battlefield. The worlds are very much Monster Hunter, littered with endemic life and a variety of creatures ranging from small monsters to tiny insects. If you love the Monster Hunter series, you'll love Rise. And if you are new to the series, the world may seem a little quirky to you but it's almost guaranteed to endear you in one form or another. Fighting Giant Monsters could be the title of this game, and for years this has been the same. Each title iterating on something a little more or a little less. World was a massive step into being more accessible to the average non-Monster Hunter gamer. There was a lot to love, and Rise takes us a little further by cutting out some of the more strenuous aspects of the Monster Hunter series. I had a blast playing with my friends, and it's easy to pick up and progress together, which created an even better play experience. We crafted our weapons and armor from the monsters we had slain, and it was slow and steadily becoming a excellent journey. And I feel like this wouldn't be something that would be easily replicable in Monster Hunter World. The combat flow is much better in Rise, and due to the addition of a wire bug which acts as a sort of zip line, this provides so many new angles of attack and ways to approach each encounter. Then no two encounters play the same, especially with the variety of weapons that you have at your disposal. And I think the new players will love the ease of access, but the veteran players may find it a tad grating to find that the Monster Hunter combat flow that they're so used to has changed so radically. So there's not much story to go through here. You arrive in a village, two strangers are in your room, you're like, what? Why are you in my room right now? And then you have to figure out why monsters are going crazy, which is basically the premise of every single Monster Hunter game ever. It's very passable, and no one really plays the games for the stories. Instead, the stories come from every battle that you share with your friends as you discuss these battles or strategies, or you're contemplating life because a monster just destroyed your whole team in one move. And you're thinking, why am I actually playing this game? This monster just absolutely annihilated us. And that's what I love about the Monster Hunter games. You have the agency to make your own stories and experiences. In this particular game, however, the whimsical Japanese setting really lends well to the new monsters that are in this. And so these small tidbits of story that you do experience are based around these monsters and creates this uh, whimsical fantasy about you destroying these monsters and figuring out what's causing all the corruption. It's quite great and I enjoyed it. How does it run? It's a truly excellent port actually. I had zero issues with this port and so this section is incredibly short. Through testing the FPS holds up regardless of the resolution I'm playing on 4K with all the settings at max. It's a shame that there's currently a cap on said FPS and perhaps this will be removed in the upcoming Summer Break DLC that releases in, well, summer. Otherwise, it's a great port in my experience. Now, there's a couple of annoying parts, like you can't change your graphic settings at the main menu. Instead, you have to go into the game to change your graphic settings. It's a bit of a time waste, and I wish that you could just change all your graphic settings at the main menu. Considering that there aren't that many graphic settings because it's been ported over from the Switch. Um, something that the developers can think about in the next game that they release. Just more usability, please. Thank you. 
disappointing, Hinoa. I really don't see how anyone could have noticed us. It was a perfect display of stealth. That's, That's why, why we expect great things of you. you. You're always, always razor sharp. Well then, I guess we still have a lot of training left to do. <sighs> what? You don't want us sneaking in? Oh, come on! This is Kimura! We're all practically family here. Besides, Elder Fugen is looking for you. So go get ready. Can't keep him waiting. Raging fights, the sound of a heavy greatsword landing upon the skull of a giant monster, classic Monster Hunter songs playing in the background, bosses with their own themes, companions with their own voices and battle cries, the shrill sound of birds circling above and the sound of shifting sand beneath your feet. All of these things add to a fantastic audio experience and if there's anything that the Monster Hunter games do exceptionally well on a consistent basis, it's the audio. Whether it be the Ultimate Series, World, or Rise, combat is visceral, the background music is epic, and the individual sounds of the monsters create an immersive experience which serve to pull you into the world. Rise is truly beautiful in that sense, the village that you frequent has a wonderful soundtrack, it's serene and tranquil, and plays seamlessly in the background as you do other things. It doesn't matter where you are in the game. Each place has its own theme and vibe, which accompanies the unique aesthetic that the Monster Hunter series has always had, and I love it. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the review. Forgive me for the delay. Jenner has been crazy with IRL stuff, but now things are coming down, you're gonna see a lot more of me. Going back to the review though, Monster Hunter Rise is an excellent addition to your library if you already have played Monster Hunter. Now it's slightly different from the traditional formula, but some of the ease of access things and the new wire bug mechanic, I think add a real next level of depth to the combat. If you're new to the franchise though, Monster Hunter Rise is also an excellent excellent addition to pick up purely because of ease of access. It kind of tunes out the more old school Monster Hunter mechanics and vibes that you usually have to deal with, making it a lot less intimidating. It means you can just jump in, fight some monsters, farm some gear, and then you're good to go. I really think it's an excellent pickup and the price point is quite good too. The performance ran really well and I was happy with it. I played it with friends and we had a blast. Anyways, guys, uh, February. February is going to be absolutely rammed with games. We have Elden Ring, Dying Light 2, Total War Warhammer 3. We have Horizon. We have Sifu. There are so many games to cover. I can't cover all of them, but the two that I'm really excited for are Dying Light 2 and Elden Ring. And I'm potentially going to pick up another one. It depends on the time. February is quite a short month. But I'm going to do my best to get the reviews out to you guys. I hope you look forward to them. Thank you for bearing with me for January. Like I said, I am back now. We're going to go full steam into February. There's lots to cover. I'm really excited for it. Thank you again for your support. And guys, if you have any games that you're interested in, leave a comment down below. I'll have a look at them and we'll see if we can do a review in the future. Anyways, guys, that's it from me. I've been Alex. This is the Bearded Breakdown and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.